this. Well, ladies and gentlemen, you know how thrilled I am to have the author, because I've been talking about the book, Manhattan Cult Story, my unbelievable true story of sex, crimes, chaos, and survival. My guest, the author, attorney Spencer Schneider. Good morning to you. Good morning, Louie. Happy to be here. Thanks for oh, having me. I am. Th you're, I'm so impacted by your book. And I, I've got to, I want to say this at the outset. So if we, in case we don't have time, at the end, not only because it's true, is it so powerful, but I love your writing style. And I have marked many, many, many examples of it. And you've got an incredible memory, by the way. Thank you very much. Yes. So again, to talk a little bit about before we get into the book, a little bit about where you are today, what you do today. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm, uh, like you said, I'm an attorney. Um, I practice uh, corporate litigation. Um, I'm in private practice. Um, and I work in Manhattan and Long Island. And um, I have one son. I have one dog. Uh, my uh, passions are uh, lifeguarding. Um, open water swimming. Um, I saw that, yeah. And, uh, you know, I have a lifeguard school. And um, what else? I love music. I love the outdoors. And I have great friends. And, you know, th th there's a happy ending to the story. Yeah, yeah, a wonderful, wonderful ending. As yeah. difficult as that period of time was for you. But I also an ice water swimmer. Yes. Again, I, you know, I, I want to get in the book, but wow. Tell me about that for a minute, if you don't mind. Yeah. So ice water swimming is basically swimming in waters that are below 42 Fahrenheit. Wow. And you don't do it like day one, but, uh, you know, you could build up to it. And I had friends who did it and I thought it was nuts. But um, once I got into it, I found out that it's very um, peaceful and um, challenging, but it, it creates such a wonderful um, uh, euphoria that I've never experienced uh, in anything. And some people say it releases like dopamine and all of these uh, endorphins that create, uh, simulate, you know, narcotics. Now, I don't know about that, but it feels good. Yeah, yeah, you know, it feels good. And it sounds yeah. interesting. I don't know what a guy in his 70th year probably shouldn't. I had one experience very quickly that I was sled riding. And this is, I don't know, five decades ago. And there, it, uh, I, I was coming really fast. It went across the street in a park and then down into a creek that was frozen on top. Fortunately, it wasn't, fortunately, it wasn't, it wasn't deep. But I still remember the feeling of getting out of that water. <laughs> so it was ex exhilarating. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Well, I, I, you know, people, have, well, the great thing is people of all ages do it. I'm 62 and I hope wow. to do it when I'm as, you know, as long as I can. And, um, you know, the big I thing I will that. say, I will say this to, to anybody, just one thing, if you don't mind me adding. Please that the, the tough thing about cold water is the first minute because you're in shock. And the thing is to avoid panicking, you will lose your breath, but it does come, come back. back. Yeah. That's, I, I've got to try it someday. Before, yeah. Well, sure. I'm still this age before I get any older. Uh, the book, again, Manhattan Cult Story, my unbelievable true story of sex, crimes, chaos, and survival. Attorney Spencer Schneider, the author, my guest. It's spencer-schneider.com or spencer-schneider.com is the website for more information. Of course, the book available everywhere and everywhere online. In the, the preface, I mean, I've got, I, I showed you before, I've got so many things underlined and well, we can get to it, Louis. We were invisible, we had to be. We took an oath of absolute secrecy. We never even told our families who we really were. We thought nothing of lying. We understood that disclosure would put us in grave danger, but we liked it that way. So take me back at that time. And again, I, I forgive me for reading from your book because there's so many, so many uh, things. Tell me about that approach. It was very interesting 
how you were approached to yes. join school. Yes, I was 29. Uh, uh, just to give you context, I was 29, an attorney working for a big firm. You know, I have a very, you know, middle class, normal background, you know, very privileged, lucky, went, went to college, went to law school. And I found uh, myself working really hard in Manhattan in those days. And, um, you know, I was approached by an acquaintance who I really respected, you know, a very bright guy and, you know, Ivy educated. And he uh, told me about this um, secret esoteric school that um, was really, you know, like a place to learn about philosophy that I had never heard of before. And that um, he found really uh, helpful to him in his life that was very practical. And so I was suspicious and not so sure, but I, I, I attended a meeting. It was in a loft in downtown and it was all very hush hush. And um, that was a little odd, but I was willing to give it a shot. And that was how I got introduced to it. We talk about how the approach again, you write more about it in the book. Um, again, the book Manhattan Cult Story. But you, I love what you said. I've got to mention this. And I, this, this is what I mean, disorganized, discursive, chaotic. Uh, my father looks so much like Jerry Lewis that he claims Dean Martin once mistook him for his old comedy partner. I just, I love that when you write about, about your family. And again, the approach was really, really incredible. And some of the pictures that you have are absolutely wonderful in the book. Uh, and I, again, I mentioned your memory because you've got things like spot on. I, I'm blown away by that. You can remember what you were wearing, what you're doing, where, you know, I sometimes have trouble navigating my way home. Okay, maybe not that bad. <laughs> well, you know, I look, it, it, it's, it is magical how it comes back. If you asked me before I wrote the book, or without having written it down, I wouldn't be able to tell you any of that stuff, but the act of writing it and putting yourself back in events that you do remember, the texture, the details, they somehow magically come back. Now, I can't promise you I was exactly wearing that thing that day. Um, if you had a picture, I might be wrong, but to the best of my recollection, that's what comes back. And that's it's interesting. It does feel right because I knew yeah. I wore those kind of things. And I remember what the guy who invited me, you know, I remember what he smelled like. I, I remember wow. that's incredible. He, he was preppy. He wore those kind of clothes. Uh, and, you know, that's who he was. And it, it really comes back. It's a wonderful thing. It's very it's, mysterious. It, that's incredible. Uh, you also, in your writing, uh, when you're talking about Sharon, when you're talking about S, we weren't engrossed, we were transfixed under her total command. We felt her brilliance, emanations, her love or wrath, her ferocity, her power. And she talks about her history. And I could see why, I hate to say, especially at, at, at a young age, how even in older people, how you'd get attracted to that, the mystery schools, if you will. Exactly, exactly. That was the hook. Um, it was, you know, the people who went were like me, you know, highly educated professionals, you know, we were successful, we were not like your classic people who you would expect to join a cult. We and, and I didn't think I was joining a cult, I thought and we were all thought that we were joining something that had this intellectual aspect to it. And it was something I missed in my life. You know, I missed learning, I missed uh, uh, you know, the camaraderie of people who were similarly situated and wanted to learn. So that was the hook. And she was very smart, this, lead, this uh, leader, very bright. Yeah, and they're very good at pulling you in, especially oh, when yeah. you can't mention the name, you can't just school, you can't mention her name. And you also write, uh, during those years, I had nothing else but school, it was my world story about how you got entangled in school, the 23 years I spent there, how I narrowly escaped, and how I've survived. And again, I'm not going to, I'm not going to do spoilers. Again, I've got a lot of questions, but I, you talked about engrossed, you're transfixed, very engrossed in the book from the preface. It was just, and again, your writing style, I know I'm repeating myself, but the writing style is great. And you, you constantly want more. And I'm a bit of a 
maybe I shouldn't say obsessive reader, but if I'm into something, there's no going to sleep unless I absolutely have to. And as soon as I can, I picked up your book again to, oh, to continue. I'm serious. I mean, it was really, it, I, it's, it's an, it's an incredible story. Oh, I'm uh, so, so happy to hear that. That, that makes, I'm, I'm telling you again, and I, I'm a constant reader. I read people who say you talk for a living. I read for a living. So I'm, I'm always reading something. And this book is absolutely exceptional. And of course, because it's factual. You know, if it yes. was a, a novel, it's, it would still be interesting. But the, when you, I had to keep thinking, this is, this is nonfiction. This is reality. So tell me a little bit more about S or Sharon. Right. So Sharon, um, uh, what we didn't know, um, because this was pre-internet age, this was 1989. Um, what we didn't know about her was that she was a, uh, an actress, um, uh, in, uh, really kind of 60s experimental theater in San Francisco and New York. She starred in uh, Slaughterhouse-Five in the early 70s. And um, she was a woman who appeared one day after a year of me being in this group. And we had no idea who she was. She had a very bizarre appearance. And um, she spoke about very odd things. Um, and she really, I, I really did think she was nuts, but she was, there was such a deference shown to her by um, the people who had been our leaders. And it was told to us that she was their leader. And, uh, you know, as odd as she was, she did show a great deal of um, attention and affection to people and just drew you in. You know, she had a way of making you feel that, and you hear this all the time, making you feel like you're the only person in the world. And when people do that, it has a really strong effect. And um, that's why I think I and many other people were pulled in and made you susceptible to the other side of her, which was her wrath, which could be extreme. Yeah, and I, I love when you said about how he smelled. He smelled of wasp, my opposite. I have to say that line, I absolutely loved it. it, it, it that cracked me up too, by the way. So it was, but when you, in meeting her and her making you feel that way, what do you think about how you were approached and selected, if you will, to be part of school? Well, I don't think I was any different than anybody else. Uh, there was a very specific profile that they were looking for, which were highly educated, um, uh, you know, professionals who made a good living because, you know, there was money involved, uh, like all cults. They, they want, they prey on people's uh, money or other uh, uh, attributes. And mostly for us, it was money. And um, uh, like, I think... Uh, you know, um, she saw that I was eager for things in my life that were beyond money, um, you know, uh, community, friendship, and support. And that's what I found there early on. And this belief, and she knew this, that I was the type of person that would buy into her spiel that she could help me in a way that nobody else could. And that without her help, I would be lost. That's incredible. And again, ladies and gentlemen, the book is Manhattan Cult Story, my unbelievable true story of sex, crimes, chaos, and survival. Attorney Spencer Schneider, the author is my guest. You endured mental, sexual, and physical abuse, forced labor, swindling of your money, breaking up of the family's systematic terrorizing. Some students conspired with her to break the law. Uh, Sharon left her students in shambles, poor, broken down, beaten up and hollowed out. Again, it's just, uh, it's, it's, it's a great read. It's sad when you, and you, again, when you talked about the, the early, the, the sexual uh, aspect, um, it was very, very powerful. And I have to tell you that I really admire you. I really admire you, Spencer Schneider, in writing about that and bringing it forward. 
because I think it's really important for people to understand what goes on and with that type of manipulation. Right. Well, thank you. I, I thought it was important to, to speak out about that. Others do. And I speak, think it's important for men particularly to talk about, you know, um, uh, abuse and things that go on and to open up and, you know, deal with, uh, you know, all the emotions. It's very, it's, you know, it, it's, I, yeah. it's good. It's good to talk about. It, it is good. And, and it can help explain. The, I, again, I've talked a lot about this on my show. Yeah. But I, I was molested as a, a, a youngster and it took me, I don't know how many decades to really try to uh, figure out and figure out why some of my behaviors, you know, why was I drug seeking when other kids were at the football game? Why did I hitchhike into the city? To, you know, just, I couldn't, un never understood it. And it, that helped me understand it. So I, I agree with you. It's really, really, really important for men to speak out about it. I, I mean, I admire you for saying that right now. And I, I felt that if I could write about what happened to me and all of the confusion, decades and decades of confusion about it. And once it finally became clear, it was like, voila. Yeah. And then you understand and you under, understand better. And again, my yes. admiration to you, Spencer, for, for being so straightforward with, with what happened and what was going on in your head. I, I, I love that. You, you get, they disconnect you from your, old friends right there's a way that they manipulate you in that regard yes it's a very us versus them um philosophy that all cults do although i didn't leave society man i had a nine to five right. job it really just revolved around two meetings a week uh at night but i became less and less interested in my friends because they really do instill this idea of us versus them like this is a better place to be and your friends don't really understand you like we do and you fall for that yeah well, I mean, you wrote and, and i keep i'm not going to read it but you write about how you went home to your uh beautiful uh, apartments you you know where you ate where you you know everything was upscale and of course sharon wanted you to uh, keep the job and not because the the money aspect, the financial aspect. Yeah, Sharon, yeah, I mean, she loved money and she loved power and she liked to control people's lives, which is why it was so, uh, you know, uh, horrendous for us. I, I know we've got very brief time. Can you talk a little bit about your website? Oh yeah, so, well, I'm, my own website is spencer-schneider.com and that really just has information about me and about the book and my law practice and, you know, other interests. But I also have a blog, which is called Cult Revolt. Cult uh, Revolt. Dot com. And that is, I've been writing that for several years, and it focuses on my group that I was in. And, you know, look, I, I don't want to just tell my story. I really want to help other people. I, hear, uh, I see that. Get out of that. these situations. And not just that situation, but any kind of traumatic situation where you're controlled and your mind is controlled and any kind of abuse and if you feel like you're in that there's a lot of help and i yeah. wanted to talk about my situation because um i was fairly down uh, and i got got it back together and i'm happier than ever lucky yeah i'm, I'm thrilled i know you've got a split but i again i shouldn't say this I'd, I'd love to have you back if you're if you're willing there's totally. so much more i want to talk about yes i i, I the 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 book is so powerful, Manhattan Cult Story. I'm going to get a link up to cultrevolt.com. Again, I know you've got to go, and I want to thank you so much for doing the gig with me this morning. A total thrill. I love talking to you. Thank you wow. so much, Louis. Let's do it again. Thank you. Take care. How